that is the truth. That was the truth that he's contending for. Okay? He's contending for the gospel of grace. And Brian Broderson, uh, where I got a lot of these comments from, he says now every generation has to contend for grace <laughs> in the church. Because, uh, well, 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 we'll get on to it. Um, so the message is the gospel of grace. There are enemies of grace. Now, how can we contend? for the message of grace. Um, now, can we earn sanctifying grace? No. Impossible, right? Grace is undeserved favor that saves us, that sanctifies us, and leads us safely home to heaven. Grace is unmerited favor. Now, we have that, Paul's contending for it here in the first century, right? By the 5th, century, 6th century, and on, all the way until the Reformation, we, those who were contending for grace, lost the argument, didn't they? The, 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 the church became a religion, right? It is no longer the personal relationship with Christ that was foremost, right? It was no longer accepting grace from Christ as a sinner. If you had to do things, and they had a whole list of things. You could pay money, right, to the church and have, have some things uh, taken care of eternally for you by the church leaders. It all seems very bizarre to us now, but all the religions were that way. That was how things were. Um, but the, uh, the rediscovery of the doctrine of grace of being declared righteous in the in faith in Christ, being declared righteous in faith in Christ. That, that's just that concept was the basis for the whole Reformation, right? And in the state of grace, we are still sinful, and we still sin, right? Even though we we're, we're in a state of grace now, while we're sinful, and we continue to sin. The most important thing to remember by faith. Sin has no dominion over us. Correct. Correct. And what does Paul say? Paul said he's been crucified with Christ. Right? Okay. Um, despite that we are accepted, uh, okay, despite that we are accepted and declared righteous, right? Through faith in Christ. Now Luther said, salvation by grace alone is hard to accept and hard to hold on to. And Broderson, he says the theme of the New Testament is the grace of God. God has not dealt with us according to our sins, but in mercy and grace through Jesus Christ. Do any of us want what we deserve? I don't. I want grace, right? But it is so antithetical to the world that we live in, isn't it? It's, it's opposite. It's a complete foreign thinking. It's very hard as they said, salvation by grace alone is hard to accept and hard to hold on to because the whole world system is fighting against it. Okay, there are enemies of grace. There have always been enemies of grace. The number one enemy of grace has been religion. Jesus fought religion. Paul fought religion. The reformers in the 15th and 16th century fought religion. And we have to fight religion today. And religion is any system that depends on human merit for divine acceptance and approval. All the religions of the world are enemies of grace. Hostility towards Jesus had always stated, always started when he acted in grace. Okay? When Jesus acted in grace, boom, they were on. Any enemy of grace, another enemy of grace is just the world system. You get what you negotiate. Right? Um, uh, Terry and I bought a car in 2013. What do we pay for that car? You know, uh, by grace we were given money by God. You know, so we had we had money to, to buy the car or had income to get a loan, right? But there's no grace there. You pay what you negotiate. That's what you pay. <laughs> right? Right. And that's the way the world is. Okay. And so it's, and that's why it's so difficult for people to accept grace. It's, it hasn't been their experience in life. 
Okay, another enemy of grace is our pride. Grace precedes everything. It's our pride that leads us to the error of thinking that if I perform better, I'll get more grace. <laughs> now, come on, now, I'll admit that comes into me. Sometimes, you know? <laughs> if me I too, have a good too. week, <laughs> I, I thought, well, maybe I'll get a little more grace. You know, how much you give, how much you time you spend, you know, with the Lord. We all think we're going to get a little more grace if we just work a little harder, right? Just, you know, just give a little more effort. That is totally erroneous thinking, right? Uh -huh. We know that. Right? <laughs> we know that intellectually. But feeling it is completely different, isn't it? Yeah, it feels yeah. better, you know, when we think we're, we're, we're contributing to the grace we're given. That's just the state we're in. We'll get into that next week, too, because we, we can have this feeling that if we have a good week, I did, you know, all my Bible studies, yeah. and I, I did really good, then yeah. God must love me more, like Brian was talking about. And, you know, I, I should get more favors from God and so on, and, and it's that kind of thinking. But um, the way to view it is kind of how we, we love our own children, right? I mean, they do bad things, but we still love them at right. heart, and that's yes. how God is with us. So. Could you say that louder so my mom could hear that? <laughs> 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 How to contend for grace, moving right along, okay? The one thing about grace that another scripture says, know you not, as many of you that were declared righteous, now you're supposed to declare from righteousness to holiness. Right. Yes. So, right yeah. so that's why you have Ephesians telling you to put off the old man by the renewing of your mind, and put on this part of grace now to what Christ wants you to have. Yes. And that's the struggle. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. So how do we contend for grace? Um, well, Brian Brooks, he came up at this point, let's never forget where we came from. Let's never forget our own experience of grace. We are all recipients of grace. Right? We know it. We feel it. And don't forget that. All right? Um, and never underestimate the power of God's love and grace to transform a person. You know, we might think someone's unreachable. Just give up, give it up. You know, and uh, that's not true. That 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 that's that's not, that's not right thinking either. No one is beyond his reach. Okay, meditate on the life of Jesus. Okay, and then also study Romans, Galatians. Congratulations. And Ephesians. Our next study. Our next study, right? Yeah. Yeah. And remember we did Romans, Romans 8, and Romans uh, had a lot of, uh, on this, okay? So when you read the Gospels, we see Jesus in his dealings and pouring out grace. See yourself in that story, okay? Jesus was the walking manifestation of the grace of God. Exemplify grace. you got to create a cultural manifestation. It can't be lived what needs to be lived out. Grace brother, east side grace brother, east side grace brother. There's got to be grace here, right? And, and, and I, I bring, you know, most of the the big churches, church growth. There's there's, there's some some churches are growing. Do you know how they're growing? Are they are they reaching out into the world and bringing people who are totally unchurched? No. Ninety nine percent of the large church growth is from the small churches in that metro area that are closing or people are leaving those small churches and, and joining the larger churches. So they're gone. Yeah. And there's, uh, well, for a lot of good reasons. I mean, you know, if you want a great children's ministry for your kids, go to a bigger church. They have a, they have a better ministry. You know, they do. They have more resources. They got teachers. You know, they got, we got Marty. I mean, I mean, that's, that's, that's awesome, awesome, isn't it? Yeah. And as a church, we have, you know, a pastor that, that can focus on that. We should make people pay double just so we have Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the plate twice down the road. Yeah, yeah. really. Marty Moose. Marty Moose, yeah. Right. Um, now, uh, many Christians have no grace. Um, I, I say that, that okay, why even, there is a need, we know this, out in the world, if people spend more time in the Word, 
uh, associating with our pastors and in a small group study or, or, or um, uh, just being in a group, they would benefit, right? We all know people that would benefit from that, right? Well, there's a reason they're not here, okay? And the reason may be in their life they ran across a Christian with no grace. And it only takes one. And they think, well, that's how Christians are. Why do I want to go there? They don't accept me. They don't want me. They're going to give me a bunch of rules. i got to get rid of all of my friends. i got to stop doing what I'm doing. I'm not going to do that. They're not, they're not ready. They're not ready. What is it? What is our motto, Richard? Accepting people where they are. You know? Right. Well, how do you accept people where they are? That takes a grace. Yes, it, it does. <laughs> and they're annoying. Oh. They, have, they have habits. They have they have speech patterns that, that are different, <laughs> don't they? They say things. They say things that go, what? <laughs> it's a lot of work, isn't it, to, to be graceful? It's it's probably the most difficult thing there is to do is be graceful. You know? Some people you just want to whoop. <laughs> the dude, he just needs a piece of sense into him. You know, that's what he needs. That's not grace. That doesn't get us anywhere, does it? Okay. Well, who's uh, who's next? Let's see now. Six. So let's go back to six. Okay, let's go to six. 